United States aircraft carriers, also known as the floating city. If you enlist in the military, depending on your rate, there's a good chance that you can end up on one of these big boys. And these big summer bitches house over 5,000 sailors at a time. So it's only natural to wonder, what are the living arrangements like on a United States aircraft carrier? Subscribe to the channel, don't worry, I got you. Let's get into it. Now my whole team split up. I'm like, damn man, what the fuck? These young bucks making them bucks. We at the whole city with us. It's like party city with us. What's poppin' YouTube? 9 11 the Baby Go, welcome to the Go Forum. I got something for you. Today's video was actually thought of by you, the subscriber. If you in the future have a question that you would like to see answered in this own video, make sure to let me know and drop down in the comment section below after you've liked this video and subscribed to the channel. I got a great video for you guys today, my reaction of what it's like to live on a United States aircraft carrier. Let's go. Aircraft carriers play an important role in both offensive and defensive strategies for any nation. Air power has always been an extremely vital part of any country's national security. Now, my rate in the military is an ABH. So the flight deck, what you see right here where this jet is landing, this is primarily where I work at when I'm out to sea on a U.S. aircraft carrier. And these massive ships greatly extend the range of fighter and reconnaissance jets where land-based operations are not an option. Now, not everybody that's on an aircraft carrier works on the flight deck. For example, if you're a culinary specialist, you're inside of the decks making food and baking cookies and shit all day. But if you're an ABH like myself, then primarily you're on the flight deck. Let me go ahead and describe to you what the flight deck is like. First off, it's pretty big. Last time I checked, I believe the length of a flight deck is roughly around three football fields. But it is one of the most dangerous places in the world as far as work is concerned. There's a lot of ways to die up there. I'm just going to be honest with you. However, I've always treated the flight deck sort of like traffic. While there's plenty of ways for you to die, plenty of shit can go wrong. Similarly to traffic, it's one of those things where if you're following the rules, the only time you are likely to get hurt is in freak accidents. Majority of the rules that's written about the flight deck are written in blood. In other words, sailors died and these rules were made. So while I don't want to sell you some bullshit like, ah, you safe. I don't want to instill unhealthy fear in you either. It's an extremely dangerous work environment. It's extremely hot. There's a lot of moving parts going on almost all of the fucking time. There's a good amount of trip hazards. In fact, I can only imagine what it's like working at the VA when people try to claim their medical disabilities once they get out. Hell, if I had to guess, half of the shit probably comes from motherfuckers that work on the flight deck. So I want you to have a healthy fear of the flight deck if you were to ever work on the flight deck, but nothing that's necessarily crippling. Follow the rules. Get to know the rules because it's easy to get complacent in anything that you do but this is not one of those areas where you want to get complacent one pro i can give about the flight deck and then we're getting back to the video is that if you're working on the flight deck well you got the added benefit of seeing sunlight every day you'd be surprised at how many people don't really see sunlight that much out to sea especially depending on where they work at on a u.s aircraft carrier there are many levels on an aircraft carrier including both up and down some of the levels are below the water literally that you don't even see in the video and depending on the lifestyle of your rate or aka your job you may or may not not actually see sunlight all that much. Shout out to the nukes in the Navy. That's some of the scariest shit in the world. I'm gonna tell you right now, you can go on YouTube right now and just look up broken wire on aircraft carrier. If that wire were to break, it will literally snap your fucking body in half. And my rate just so happens to put me in a position where I'm extremely close to the wire when the jet is catching it. So if it were to break, I got all about maybe a second to react. And even then, it's not guaranteed that I'd actually make it out alive. Most aircraft carriers boast a carrying capacity of up to 90 aircraft. So if you look at these alternating red and yellow lines, this is an elevator. So you have the flight deck, which is obviously the top of the ship, and then you have the hangar bay, which is, think of it like the hallway of, I don't know, a high school or something. Like the main hallway everyone travels throughout to get to wherever they're trying to go. On an aircraft carrier, you have multiple elevators that are running up and down throughout the day. Jets could be on there, bombs could be on there. People could be on there and you'll normally see people gathered around the perimeter of the moving part of the elevator so that somebody doesn't just walk on there and then just, oh my God. Plus you hear horns go off. They'll make announcements over the intercom, all that good stuff. Though most of them are kept on the flight deck to ensure readiness, others remain below in the hangar bay. 
while I, majority of my career, worked on top of the flight deck, ABHs are also in the hangar bay. And while the job is safer, in a sense, in a hangar bay, like you're less likely to die, as far as our job is concerned, our responsibility was moving aircraft around the hangar bay safely. And there's not a lot of space, so that can fuck with your nerves a lot. But if you're not an AB, you still have to be aware of that if you're just walking throughout the hangar bay. While the hangar bay does have a lot of space, there's typically so much shit stored inside of the hangar bay that it takes up all of that space. So you always got to kind of be watching out to make sure you're not about to run into something or something isn't about to run into you. This garage-like structure is situated two decks under the flight deck and covers more than two-thirds the length of the ships. Aside from planes themselves, the three-deck-high hangar holds spare parts, fuel tanks, and a variety of other important equipment. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, it can get hot as fuck in the hangar bay as well. That's kind of another pro about the flight deck is though while the flight deck is hot there are areas that you can go to to get a bit of a breeze but not gonna, it's, it's, it's humid as hell majority of the time in the hangar bay if you end up working in the hangar bay just keep that in mind aircraft carrier flight crews need to minimize the chances of even the smallest debris finding its way onto the deck that's why all training and maintenance work takes place in the hangar Another interesting thing about the hangar deck is that when the day is over, well, <laughs> for normal rates, our day being over can literally go into the next goddamn day. But for most rates, when the day is over, majority of people kind of go to the hangar bay to kind of relax or chill. Like that'll be the place that you see people hanging out, talking, maybe doing some cardio. Or say, for example, if the captain or the commanding officer wants to have an all hands meeting, he'll normally either do that on the flight deck or in the hangar bay. Was that President Trump? Depending I remember he came. Configuration, U.S. carriers can boast up to four of these high-speed aluminum lifts. He came on one of the ships. I can't remember which one it was, though. So when you're not out to sea and you're in port, from time to time, the elevators will still be used. And the way that you get off of the ship, there's like a stairwell that's connected from the pier to the ship that you walk up and down on from the edge of one of the elevators. And then once you're on top of the elevator platform, that's when you walk into the quarter deck. And on the quarter deck, there's normally going to be two or three people standing watch. Watch is basically a 24-7 rotation that you do. Think of it like a uh, top flight security of the world. You're there to salute people on and salute people off is called messenger of the watch but the watch is kind of pointless at the same time because of some shit where to really pop off pop off you don't even have a gun to protect yourself i don't know why i don't know why they haven't changed this and to get off of the ship you need to have your id on you and to get onto the ship you need to have your id on you also you can't typically exit the ship looking any type of way for example if you're wearing some short shorts all the way up your ass or maybe some pants that got too many holes in it a lot of the time the messenger of the watch or the officer of the watch will turn your ass right back around. They want you to enter and exit the ship looking presentable. Not saying you gotta be in a fucking two-piece suit. You just can't look like you are ready to go thot and thug it up. But it is kind of annoying that you have to look a certain way once you're exiting the ship. And for people that actually live on the ship and don't have a barracks or an apartment, this is one of the many gripes that they have living on the ship. Whereas if you had your own place, you can leave looking however the fuck you want to look as long as you ain't naked. Living on a ship and trying to exit and go enjoy your day, you have to look what the Navy considers presentable. They are generally built around the outside of the ship, serving as part of the overall deck. When Hold on, let's go back to that real quick. This looks like a swim call. Every now and then when you're on deployment, they will allow you to have a swim call where you basically stop the ship in the middle of the ocean and you get to jump your ass off into the water. It's a pretty good time. Now, for people that barely pass the swim test in boot camp, them motherfuckers typically don't jump off. I did, but somebody had double dog dared me. But that, that, that's another story. Listen, brothers, we must, we must, we must stay focused, brothers. For instance, with up to 3,000 personnel aboard the ship at once, feeding the crew three square meals a day is an undertaking in its own right. Remember earlier I said that an aircraft carrier can have up to 5,000 people on it. So eating can be a real pain in the ass sometimes. Generally, the only times that I've seen that the lines are not long is during mid-rats, which is around 12 a.m. in the morning. Anyone can eat during mid-rats, but those are mainly for the people that work the night shift. Majority of people are gonna work the day shift though. Now, if you want more information about the type of food that you can expect to eat on an aircraft carrier, I've already made a video about that and I'll leave it down in the description box below. If you work on the flight deck, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna 
catch hell trying to get food in the mess decks because you have to go down to the hangar bay and sometimes the line to get to the food will literally wrap his ass up all the way <laughs> down near towards the fucking flight deck. Making friends with a culinary specialist will be a great idea for you if you're not a culinary specialist. That's what smart people do to try to get not only food at a reasonable amount of time, but they might even hook you up with some shit that they're out of. I can't tell you how many times I done fucked up some ice cream and there wasn't no more ice cream left because I was cool with the right people. Best way to get cool with the right people is have something that you can offer them in return. For example, there were these jackets that we used to always wear out to sea. We called them camo jackets. I knew some people that knew some people that knew a girl who baby daddy had left her. But anyway, she knew some people and he could give me camo jackets, which means I could give my CS hookup a camo jacket and in return, he'll give me some goddamn food. Get friendly with your culinary specialist. Subscribe to the channel, man. I tell you the real shit on here. I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm spilling all, I'm spilling all the beans. The mammoth vessels are often referred to as floating cities with thousands of its residents working around the clock to make sure- That's also for pictures. <laughs> Most civilians are shocked to learn about all the various facilities on these ships, many of which aren't very different from what they would find on land, including Starbucks. Yeah, uh, we do have our little, we kind of imitate Starbucks. Uh, not gonna lie, it, it, it is nice, it's nice. Again, the lines, 5,000 people. It can be a pain in the ass to get sometime, but it is a nice little convenient benefit. The hometown feeling, I guess. The uh, Starbucks you usually don't find on, on ships, especially warships. Most carriers feature a general store, a laundry, a dry cleaner and uniform shop, a barber shop, and a post office. Let's talk about that barber shop real quick. Now, while yes, you're supposed to go to the barber shop on the ship to get your hair cut, I'm gonna be honest with you, half of them motherfuckers don't know what the fuck they doing, especially when it comes to black hair. What typically happens out to sea is somebody has learned how to cut hair outside of the Navy. Now, whether they're licensed in it or whether they just don't practice on enough motherfuckers to the, to the point where they, where they done got decent, you're supposed to get your hair cut in the barber shop. However, a lot of upper chain of command don't enforce Force this rule because when we're on deployment and we pull it into different countries, they want to pull into another country with a crisp ass lineup. And the barbershop on the ship ain't giving people crisp ass lineups. What they're literally doing is just shaving your shit off and saying, next! Now, cutting hair, I'm sure, is a little bit difficult when the ship is rocking, but a US aircraft carrier, because of its size and weight, it doesn't rock as intensive as a smaller ship would. Now, this ain't me telling you to cut hair on the side out to sea. I'm just saying that the people that learn how to cut hair make a a killing out to sea in the real Navy. And from my experience, upper chain of command do not enforce the rule of only getting your hair cut in the barber shop because they too want a good cut. It's a mean ass side hustle to take advantage of. A mean ass side hustle that you're not supposed to be doing, but a mean ass side hustle that actually happens in the real Navy. There is also a sick bay offering emergency. Also, when you're on an aircraft carrier, you can have mail sent to you and you can send mail out to people. Having what we call care packages can really boost your morale when you're on deployment. If you're not gonna join the military, but you know somebody that's in the military, sending people snacks, knickknacks, letters saying how much you love them and miss them. I don't know, a new PlayStation game that just came out. When we have mail call and everybody's opening their packages amongst each other and shit, that can really make somebody's day. Boy, that shit better than clapping shit. Now I don't know about all that, but it's great. One of the worst feelings is when you don't get any mail. Everybody's opening packages and shit. And you ain't got shit. So if you want to make somebody's day that's on deployment on a ship in the Navy, be sure to send them a care package. And if you're in the Navy and you want your day made, be sure to encourage your family or significant others to send you shit. There is also a sick bay offering emergency services, a dental clinic, and in-house labs for checking test results. There's a reason why we call it a floating city. Yes, there's a, a medical, a dental out to sea. Now, depending on how bad somebody may fuck themselves up, there are times where they get flown off of the ship to the nearest ally country that we can find and maybe get put in the hospital so that they have access to better technology and more people. But if you get sick and you need some medicine or maybe you need a tooth extracted, you can get that done out to sea on an aircraft carrier. This has led to the development of some unique rituals and customs over the years. One of the most notable is what's known as the line crossing ceremony. The line crossing ceremony is basically when we cross the equator and a lot of hazing goes on, which is kind of funny because hazing is forbidden in the military, but 
will allow it this one time. Arg me, matey. <laughs> Fuck it. Hypocrite. Navy logic. I don't know what to tell you. I had a ball with it. While they did have us doing a lot of dumb shit, like blowing dirt out of pad eyes with our mouths, we would just land on the ground going... <laughs> <laughs> that was a point where me and my entire division were on the elevators and we were getting raised up and people were spraying us with water hoses and shit and i started doing that line off of the black panther movie you know the ha, ha. and i had the whole fucking flight deck hype i'm not gonna lie that shit was hype as hell and i really fucked with the black panther movie this takes place whenever new crew members are set to cross the equator for the first time The rules vary from ship to ship, but are always something of a seaboard ritual managed by the crew leaders, which typically includes costumes, plays, and diverse fun regalia. Your enjoyment of some of the morale boosters that they will have in the Navy is really going to be based off of how toxic or non-toxic your command is in the first place. My command was toxic as fuck. I believe these motherfuckers was hired by Satan himself and was working overtime. So a lot of the morale boosting things that they did at my command, I didn't really give a fuck about, if I'm being all honest. I tried to make the best of it, but I knew it was fake at the end of the day. This video didn't show it, but obviously you're going to have a place to wash your ass and you're going to have a place to sleep. I can sum that up for you real quick. The birthing areas are pretty pretty tight, it's pretty nut to butt for the most part. You typically have three racks to choose from, a bottom, middle, top. The middle rack is the one that's easiest to have access to and is most people's favorite, but it's also the easiest rack for your chain of command to nitpick with because of the ease of access. And it typically is the one where people like to steal the most shit from. The bottom rack is arguably the worst rack because you always gotta bend down for shit. And every time you're looking up, you're looking up at somebody's nut sacks, just dangling and shit as soon as you wake up in the morning. My personal favorite was the top rack. If you're on the top rack you don't have to worry about anyone accidentally stepping on your sheets if anything you doing is stepping around this motherfucker don't step on people's shit you liable to get your ass whooped i'm just saying you don't have to worry about footprints on your sheets if you're the top rack also on my ship the top rack was typically the rack that had the electric ports so i typically had first dibs to the shit and if somebody had something plugged in and then they went to sleep and i unplugged that shit and plugged my shit in there and it was easy to do because i was in the top rack also you typically get your racks inspected every day but from what i've seen the chain of command typically is a little bit more lenient on the top rack because they lazy ass don't feel like climbing up there to see what's in your shit. And the top rack has more headspace than the middle and the bottom rack does. So you can actually kind of lean over and see what's going on in the burden. And on top of that, depending on where your rack is at, you may be closest to the AC. So you can open or close the vents depending on how hot or cold you're getting. Now that can piss people off in the burden. I'm just saying I'd rather be the one in the position to piss people off than being the one that's getting pissed off because it's too hot or cold in the burden. You typically have a lounge area where you can sit down and play video games maybe be on your laptop all of that good shit that's where majority of people go and chill at if not the hangar bay when they're off of work you know if they're not you know sneaking people into the burden or sneaking into other people's burden clapping cheeks i don't want to harp on that too long but do people be fucking on the ship yes you got hormonal horny ass women and men out to sea sometimes for months on end with a hard dick and a wet vagina it happens and a lot of people get in trouble for the shit and a lot of people get busted down in rank for the shit do i recommend the shit no it's not worth losing your back over some dick or some ass does it happen all the fucking time have i seen it happen you gotta wait till i get out the navy before i give you that answer <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just, bro, it happens. It happens a lot. Don't do it though. It's not worth it. If you feel like you need to clap some cheeks, just get a hotel room or some shit once you hit port. And when you go in the bathroom, they only have so many toilets and stalls that you can use. So unless you feel like waiting all day, you're normally gonna have to go really early or a little bit later if you wanna just go in, shower, and come out. And whatever you do, do not touch the shower curtains. That shit got more nut on it than pecan pies. And do not get caught slipping taking a shower without shower shoes. No no one will ever let you live that down and that's disgusting because those floors are disgusting because those floors have more piss dookie and sperm years of it than you can imagine and if you would like to see what people eat on an aircraft carrier i got you check this video out 9 11 the baby goat thank you guys so much for joining the goat forum be sure to drop down in the comment section below let me know what you would like to see next like this video subscribe to the channel for more i will see you guys on the next video peace